Okay, so we are going to try and work out the values of these different um, trig ratios that we have here. But the most important thing is that this is going to be done without a calculator. And you're probably thinking, why do I have to do it without a calculator? I have a calculator in every exam. It's all about speed and it's all about getting to know these trig functions. So you're not doing this to get the answer. You're doing this to get to know these trig functions. So I'm going to do it in a couple of different ways. One is going to be using our cast diagram. And the other way that I'm going to do this is by using our uh, um, trig laws. And the trig laws that I'm talking about are these ones that I've got here. So first of all, let's work out the turn of 225. And I'm going to do it by using a diagram that I have over here. So first of all, I need to put on where is 225? Well, 225, 180 is going to be over here, which means that I've got an extra 45 left over. So this is 180, this is 45. Now, this, if I wanted to write it as an acute angle of another one, tan is the gradient of this line that I've got here. The other place where tan has that gradient is up here. So that angle that we have is 45 degrees. So clearly the tan of 225 is going to be the same as the tan of 45. And the tan of 45 degrees, you should have memorized, is 1. Now there's another way that you could do this by using the trig laws. We have just said that tan repeats every 180 degrees. So the tan of 225 I can take away 180 from 225, and I know it's going to be the same because that's how often it repeats. And so I get the tan of 45, which is 1. OK, let's just show that that is true. Let's do the tan of 225. It is indeed 1. OK, let's think about the tan of 210 this time. So I'm going to draw my diagram, try and keep it consistent with the right colours. And I really should be trying to draw some circles in here but they're so bad. Okay, so 210, that's 180, and then it's got an extra 30 degrees. So it's 30 degrees like down here. You can see that the gradient is positive there. So the other place where it's the same is the gradient of this section, which is 30 degrees. So this appears to say that the tan of 210, which is this bit down here, is the same as this bit over here, which is tan 30. Now, you should know what the tan of 30 is, because we've been trying to memorise them. The tan of 30 degrees is the smaller one out of root 3 and 1 over root 3. So it is 1 over root 3. Now, you can also use the idea that tan repeats every 180. So because tan repeats every 180, that means that the tan of 210 is the same as the tan of 210 minus 180, which is the tan of 30, which is 1 over root 3. Let's just check that that's true, though. The tan of 210 is 1 over root 3. So I'm using the calculator as a check. I'm not using it to get the answer. OK, now we're going to have a look at doing something with sine instead. So we're going to do the sine of 150. I'm going to sketch where 150 is on this circle. Now, if 180 is over here, 150 is going to be at this point. So this whole angle is 150. That's going to get a bit messy, so I'm not going to include that. I'm actually just going to include the small angle here, which is 30. Now, remember, sine is how far up that it goes. So clearly, this is going to be the same as the amount that it's going up when it's over here. So this must be the same as each other. Now, this is telling me that the sine of 150 is the same as the sine of 30. Have a think to yourself, what is the sine of 30? These are all going to be exact values. Sine of 30 is the first one you need to remember. It's a half. So we'll check that in just a second. But in my writing that I've got over here, we're going to use the trig law that sine x is the same as sine of 180 minus x. So here I've got the sine of 150, which I know from our um, trig law that I've got here is the same as sine of 180 minus 150 which is the sine of 30, which is a half. Let's check that that's true. So we're going to say that the sine of 150, it is a half. So we've got that correct. OK, let's have a look at a few more. We're going to do the cos of 300 degrees. So you can either draw your cast diagram. 
300 degrees. Well, 300 degrees, I guess I could think about it as going nearly all the way around, or I could think about it as coming almost 360, but there's like a 60 that it's had to come backwards from 360. Now, the cause of that is how far to the right it is. So it looks like the other one that's going to be the same as that is up here, which is 60 degrees. So the cos of 300 appears to be the cos of 60. Now, to remember what cos of 60 is, all you need to think, okay, sine of 30 is a half. Okay, so that must mean that cos of 60, they've both switched, must also be a half. Let's erase this bit that I've got here. That's how I would memorize it. And then I'm going to do the other one using the fact that the cos of x is the cos of 360 minus x. So here we've got the cos of 300, which is the cos of 360 minus 300, which is the cos of 60, which is a half. So I'm just going to check that, that the cos of 300, cos of 300 is a half. We've got that right. OK, now we're coming to some that are a bit different. We're going to have a look at the sine of minus 45. So the sine of minus 45, minus 45 is going to be coming down like this as 45 degrees. Now, 45 degrees is going to be this downwards bit that we've got over here. And the only other place where I think it's going to be the same as that is if it were going upwards, but it wouldn't be exactly the same if it were going upwards. It would actually be the same, but negative. So this makes me think that the sine of minus 45 is actually the same as the minus sine of 45 degrees. OK, you can sort of think about this as um, when we write C-A-S-T, we know that sine of 45, which uh, minus 45, which is down here, is negative because that's the only thing that's positive is cos here. And so we have to negate it of the one that's in this all section up here. If you're not sure what I mean by that, you should go and look back at some of the, the older videos. Now, sine of 45 is 1 over root 2 and it's negative. So I can put minus 1 over root 2. Now, this trig law doesn't really work so well over here. This is why I quite like having this diagram that we've got in this section, because um, if you do our trig law and you say sine of 45 is the, sorry, minus 45 is the sine of 180 minus minus 45, you get the sine of 225. And the sine of 225, we don't have an exact value for. So this diagram that you've got here is really useful to do. OK, let's have a look at the cos of 750. I actually might, with the cos of 750, I might actually do this one, first of all. We know that cos repeats every 360 degrees. So the cos of 750 must be the same as the cos of 750 minus 360. Well, let's just see what that is. So we're going to do 750 minus 360. OK, well, that's 390. And so I can take away another 360 from that, and I get the cos of 30. Now, you should know that the cos of 30 is, well, the sine of 30 is a half, so the cos of 30 has got to be root 3 over 2. And you're probably thinking, how do I do this using the cast diagram? Well, we're going to do the same kind of idea. We know that 750, we've just worked out, is 360 and 360 and 30. So what it means is you're doing a loop, a loop, and then an extra 30 degrees up here. So 750 is the same as this one. So we can just go straight to saying it's the same as cos of 30 degrees, which is root 3 over 2. Let's just double check that. So we've got the cos of 750. And we get root 3 over 2. OK, so we're going to do the cos of 120 that we've got down here, and then that's us done, ready for exercise 10b. I'm going to start off by doing my cast diagram of this one. So maybe I should be getting in the habit of putting these circles in. I'm not very good at drawing them on here, which is why I avoid it. Now, 120 degrees, we know, is um, going to be somewhere in this second quadrant. 120 degrees is going to be this bit. And so we know this bit here is 60 degrees. 
Now, remember, cos is referring to how much left or right it's going. So it looks like it's actually going to be negative. So I can already make a, a, an assumption here that it's going to be the negative version of something. Hang on, I want that in black. It's the negative version of something. Now, the other place where it would be the same green length, but the positive version of it is actually going to be over here, where this is 60 degrees. So this one, I'm going to do it in a dotted line, is the same as this one. But negative. So this appears to suggest that the cos of 120 is the same as the negative version of the cos of 60 degrees. Now we know that sine 30 is, actually we've already got it up here, we've got the cos of 60 is a half, so the cos of 120 is minus a half. Now the trig laws for this one also doesn't work quite so well because if you do cos x equals cos of 360 minus x, you get that the cos of 120 is the cos of 360 minus 120, which is the cos of 240, but we don't have an exact value for that. So the cast diagram helps us identify which angle that it is related to. And what you'll notice is this angle that you draw in here with the x-axis in all of them is the giveaway, like in this one. 60 degrees was the angle, 45 degrees, 30, 30 here, always drawn with the x-axis. So you've got enough um, information now to be able to do exercise 10b um, you can check them all on the calculator like I did here. In fact, I didn't really do it for the last one. What was my last one? Cos of 120. It's also, it's minus a half, so we did get it right. So I want you to do it without a calculator um, as kind of testing your logic of how it works, and then you can check your answers with a calculator. Okay, guys, thanks.